Good morning, Star Wesley members and guests. Welcome to our 8th online Sunday service. First, let me remind you, today is Holy Communion Sunday. Please get ready your Holy Communion elements. We shall partake of this Holy Communion together afterwards. If this is your first time with us, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Kindly leave your contact details behind. You can help us by filling up a registration form. It is in the YouTube description below. Do let us know if you have any prayer requests. If you want to know more about our programs, what we do, or about our Christian faith, we will be glad to provide and to assist. Just keep us informed of your needs. As you know, the nation's battle with COVID-19 pandemic continues. It has affected the livelihood of many in the country. If you know of anyone who needs food aid, our church COVID relief program is still ongoing. Kindly contact our pastor or let our church leaders know. The world sounds chaotic to many of us. Recession, cold war, joblessness, and financial crisis. All these are holding up the spaces in our mind. Be assured what our Lord said. I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with long life and give them salvation. Thus said the Lord. Keep this in your mind. Psalms 91 verse 14 to 16. We shall now begin our worship. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son. Oh, 
Psalm 25 To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his ways. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how my enemies have increased and how fiercely they have hated me. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope is in you. Redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. Father God, we thank you. You are our Lord, God and King, the one from whom all blessings flow, the King whose rule and kingdom is forever. We thank you that you are our Heavenly Father who cares for us. And we echo the words of the psalmist that says, Relieve the troubles of our hearts and free us from our anguish. Look to our affliction and our distress and take away all our sins. So Lord, we thank you that we have a God who is our refuge, who guards us and rescues us, a God in whom we can trust. And so we praise you this morning, Lord Jesus, our Saviour and our friend. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know How I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Sing, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I Jesus, even in the midst of this pandemic, we thank you that we are the God in whom we can trust, our rock and our refuge, the anchor for our soul through the storm of life. Father God, you sit and throne over the affairs of this world, and we, your children, can rest in your fatherly goodness. 
And even through this season of trial, we can give you glory. We can bring our sacrifice of praise. For we know that it is in your hands that we are sustained. And we thank you for the cross where we are reminded of your love for us. And because of this, we can look to tomorrow. For we know who holds tomorrow and who holds our hands. And so, Lord, we will wait on you and watch you act, O Lord. We wait for a breakthrough in the containment of the virus, a breakthrough in the political scene in our country, a breakthrough in the things that drag our lives down. O Lord, we pray that you restore our nation, you restore our people, and you restore our health and our lives, O Lord. Through Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
We celebrate the Lord's Supper online, the invitations. Christ, our Lord, invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's pray the prayer of confessions and pardon together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with, one, with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Share the good news. Christ died for us. While we are yet sinners, that prove God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Together, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord. It's right to give our thanks and praise. It's right and a good, joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so we are people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join in the unending hymn. Together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of power and might, Heavens and earth are full of your glory, who sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who sana in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you give birth to your church, deliver us from the slavery to sin and death, and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night that he gives up himself up to us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in the remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Together, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on this gift of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. They will be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, we feast at His heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Together, Amen, Amen, Amen. You may partake of the bread and drink of the wine now. After that, together, we close in the Lord's Prayer.
Let us now unite in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Abba Father, I want to pray for the elderly for your word in Psalm 46 verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Lord God, we pray for our elderly parents, grandparents, friends and neighbors who are vulnerable. Please protect them from the corona virus infection and heal them to of their existing illnesses. Please help us to be salt and light at such times and reach out to them that they may be able to experience your love and comfort through our lips, hands and feet. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, we want to pray for the anxious. For your word say in First Peter chapter five verse seven, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Dear God, please take away your fear and anxiety and replace that with the peace that passes understanding. Please comfort them with your presence and your love and give them a heart thanksgiving purpose and joy this Sunday. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Father God, for all that you have been to us. You are to us and you will be to us. The forever faithful, merciful and gracious Heavenly Father who loves us with an everlasting love. Thank you for technology and gadgets that have enabled us to worship you online wherever we are during this prolonged COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. For those, especially the seniors, who are not able to worship online with us, I pray, Father God, that you will draw near to them, strengthen them, and fill them with your love, your joy, and your peace, which surpasses all understanding, to guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. Help us, Father God, to be sensitive to the needs of those around us, so that we may be able to reach out to them with helping hands. Help us to live exemplary lives, that we may mirror the image of Jesus Christ and glorify His precious name. Help us to love our neighbours as ourselves and treat our mates and workers with due respect so that our Christian fragrance may draw them unto yourself. Cover us with the precious covenant blood of Jesus and shield us and our loved ones from getting infected by the coronavirus. We pray, Father God, that you will intervene divinely and render the coronavirus powerless in Jesus' mighty name so that we may return to normalcy and find relief from economic hardship. In your manifold and great mercies, relent your wrath and indignation against us, O Lord, and elevate the sufferings of your people, that we may experience more of your prevailing grace and mercy. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Almighty and Holy God, for letting us see the light of a new day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your abounding mercy and goodness in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice made on the cross for our sins. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence with us each day, guiding and strengthening us all the way. Father God, this morning we come boldly before your throne of grace, not by our own righteousness, but by the righteousness of Christ that has been imputed to us. We ask you, O great and mighty God, that you give to our leaders and health ministers wisdom 
and humility as they deliberate and make crucial decisions in preparing for the easing of the current restrictions. Bring the right people to them who will give them good and sound advice. Enable the relevant authorities to come up with effective plans to implement preventive measures in our country. Lord, please lead and guide them to make wise decisions and to take the right steps into lifting of the restricted movement controls and border controls that will work successfully to break the spread of the virus. We also pray for all people, citizens and migrants alike, to behave responsibly and to be cooperative at all times, even after the lifting of the MCO, to help halt the spread of the COVID-19 virus. We pray for everyone to abide by the SOP prescribed by the relevant authority and that all will be willing to make changes to the new normal in the fight against this COVID-19 virus. Cover us, Lord, with your peace and protection during this season of darkness. We choose to give you praise and thanks today and believe that this season of darkness will fade away. We thank you that you are with us in whatever we face and that you are greater than the pandemic that's ravaging the world. We recognize and acknowledge that you are sovereign and in control over all. And we know that just as your eye is indeed on the sparrow, so also do you care for each one of us and will lead us through this time by your victorious right hand. All this we pray and us in Jesus' glorious and powerful name. Amen. Shall we go to our Lord in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we come to you today with a grateful heart. There are enough reasons for us to appreciate your grace and mercy. When we are lost, you directed our steps. When we are tired, you gave us rest. When nobody cares, you shower love. When we are limited by our thoughts, you gave us wisdom. There are more reasons than these to reciprocate your care and concern for us. Merciful Father, we will continue to find joy in giving, as in receiving your loving kindness. Therefore, Lord, embolden our giving as we pledge our tithe and offering, our love and appreciation for all we have and all you can. In Jesus' most precious name, Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters in Christ. Scripture will be read from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 to 7. Verse 1. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he has made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the traps of Jacob, and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. Verse 7 This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and rise up, princes will see and bow down, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of God. The peace of God be with you. I will begin with express our condolence to the family of Sally Lee, 
for the recent return to the Lord of her dear mother. Let's continue to uphold the family in our prayer. This morning, we move to Isaiah section 6, talk about light in the darkness, the coming of the servant, which is Messiah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the prophecy in the book of Isaiah 3,000 years ago, talking the coming of the servant, the Messiah, to bring light into darkness. And Father, we thank you 2,000 years ago, our Lord Jesus came to bring Asher in the kingdom of God and bring his light to shine into the darkness and cast out the darkness that is in us. And henceforth, we can walk in the kingdom of light, no longer held in bondage in the domain of darkness. Therefore, Father, we ask again, now, today, even if we hear the word of God in the book of Isaiah, it will come alive to us. It's light will shine to our darkness. And we may know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Father, I give thanks to you in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we are looking to light in the darkness, liberty to the captive, love and hope to the discouraged. Isaiah chapter 49 talk about the servant. This servant starts with a big S, which means uh, the Messiah. And the function or the work of this uh, servant is to bring the Gentile nation near to the God of Israel. That means it is a light that shines into the Gentile nations. This is the work of the nation of Israel, but they have failed. And so therefore, only in the book of Isaiah, only God's servant could bring them, the Gentile nation, near to God. Let's move to the topic, light in darkness. God prepared the servant like a sharp, short, and a polished arrow. Isaiah 49, verse 2. We should mean the Messiah come with both as a servant to bring in the good news and also as a warrior. And Isaiah go on to say that each and every one of us are the servant of God and God will use us, will prepare us will train us. And a holy servant is an awful weapon in the hand of God. I want to sidetrack a little bit saying that we need a little bit of training. Like for example, during the MCO, we have a totally different way of reaching out to the people. In the MCO, we need to connect with one another and we need to be able to reach out. We thank God the last Sunday our uh, online service, we are able to reach out to about 400 viewers. 400 times 2 would be about 800 or 900, almost a thousand, which is normally we're not able to do it. But uh, what we want to move to the next step is we want to keep connected. And what has been done is called Zoom, which are, some churches in KL, they do Zoom two or three times per day. Care group, daily devotions, Bible study. And so we cannot say we don't know. We are servants of God. We need to be trained. And this is one thing we need to train is into the Zoom area. Even after the MCO, we can see you Zoom to reach out the people that we cannot physically meet together. But we conduct their fellowship, encouragement, and share the gospel. Even for the new believer, we, we cannot meet together we still can have Zoom with them. So, church, move in time. Let even though MCO, the church is mission is not hindered or obstructed. Just say we move into a different dimension, a new opportunity for us to serve God. Those who love God, those who serve God, please get ready and know how to do the Zoom. We want every one of us to be able to do Zoom. So Jewish nation was called to glorify God like you and I, to be a light to the Gentile nation, but they failed. Today we can say we are called to be a light of the world, the salt of the earth, but we can be we, we could have failed in many areas. As I said earlier, we were not able to grab the opportunity during the MCO to use Zoom or other things to reach out. The Messiah came to do the work that Israel supposed to do. If we don't do the work, God will raise up somebody else to do it. 
So today the church is a light, God's light in the darkness. And like Israel, we seem to have feeling in a mission because we have not able to grasp the significance of being God's servant trained. Remember, we begin by saying that the servant is, is, uh, the, servant is the Messiah, but also a warrior. In the sense that, I find it very true today. We, we, at one end, we're reaching out uh, in evangelism, personal evangelism, uh, bringing people to come to know Jesus, Lord and Savior. Out of school by Gideon there, uh, a couple of weeks ago, there's one person contacting us that they want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior after getting into our online service. But at the same time, we are warrior because it's a spiritual warfare. And we need to be able to rescue people who are helped in darkness. And the light must shine in the darkness. First into our darkness, then into the darkness of the world. So that we can bring people out from the domain of darkness into the goddess kingdom of light. And so, second part that we want to talk about in Isaiah chapter 49 is liberty to captive. As Moses lead the nation out of bondage in Egypt, God will lead his people out of captivity in Babylon 3,000 years ago. Today, lead people out of captive in the domain of darkness. Moses is a great leader. And today, we must have more people like him. They're able to lead the people out of darkness into the light of our Lord Jesus Christ. Joshua lead the people into the promised land to, inherit, to, to obtain the inheritance that God given to them. And in Isaiah 40, 49, says, God will bring those Jewish people who are in exile in Babylon back to the land. And God will will give them the land again. They can inherit the land again. But you can say that Isaiah 49, look beyond the deliverance from Babylon towards the future goddess kingdom of God. So you can say this prophecy in Isaiah 49, we have an immediate fulfillment that the people after 40, uh, 70 years of exile in, in Babylon, in 538, 539 BC, they came back to Jerusalem. But he also has his future fulfilled today, 3,000 years later. That today, you and I still are able to deliver people out from the domain of darkness. But we must be equipped to do it. We must grab the opportunity given to us. Opportunity given to us we can wait and wait, but opportunity is now right at our doorstep. And I say again, we need to be trained in this area. Of course, you are interested, please contact me. Then I will try to get people to, to do training in Zoom. In fact, uh, these times I have four times we have the pastor Zoom. Uh, and today, some of us also have Zoom with the TCF. Penang, and uh, 25th of June, 8 p.m., Bishop will be reaching out to us in the, in the track Zoom. And they expect about 400 of us um, to be able to log in to attend to it. So if you have missed the first part, the second part, then log into, get ready a Zoom, install the Zoom installer on the 25th of June, 8 p.m., then we're able to log in and uh, with a bishop. The link are all in our uh, our WMC Church Matter WhatsApp. Just get ready the Zoom. If you don't have a smartphone, buy one today. Only three, four hundred ringgit only. You can get a simple uh, smartphone that able for, for you to do the Zoom. And so Isaiah look be, 49 looked beyond the deliverance on Babylon, which take place. Today, the goddess kingdom of God. God will call Jewish people from the ends of the earth and gather them again in the land. Of course, some of us are familiar with history. 
in 1947, the formations of the nation of Israel, recognized by the United Nations, is where all the Israelites scattered all to the end of the earth are gathered back in today Israel. The third part I want to touch on is love and hope to the discouraged. There are people who are who lost their fortune, who lost their livelihood in this MCO period. And, and, they, and they want to hear some encouraging words. I thank God that we are social con- concerned community have basically reached out to about, by now it's uh, three, 300, 400 people. But the Lord also uses us to comfort His people and would tell these people God have compassion on his afflicted one. Isaiah 49 picture Israel as a nursing child totally depends on the Lord who never forget them nor forsake them. And it described in three forms that's in the book of Isaiah talk about nursing mother, talk about warrior, talk about lovers. At this moment, I want to interrupt a second time. When you look at the, read the book of Isaiah, you read, then you start to get a feel of the passage. I must confess today, we are in, 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 in the world of light and sound. Unlike, unlike uh, maybe 30, 40 years ago, where computer haven't taken its form as today, we read books. And when we read books today, we can, we can it attract us into a setting. And therefore, when you read the book of Isaiah today, not just words you want to, you, you are reading, you want to absorb into a story. God has a story to tell us. It's God's story. So when you read the book of Isaiah and you're able to absorb in his story, then you can, you can feel as if God revealed his love, his compassion right before us. So reading the scripture is not just by our mouth only, but by our eye and with our heart. And then with our mind able to, to, to grasp the story that the, the word is trying to tell us. And that's why if you read it again, you, you may get the story clearer and clearer. And this is how God's story comes alive to us. To me, that is more important than my preaching today. If you can able to grasp God's story when you read the word of God, God will speak to you. When I read, the Holy Scripture. I fall, I, 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 I drunk myself into the story of God. And He speaks to me, maybe different from you or different from another person. But that's God's story for you and I to grasp. And therefore, let's learn a new thing today. Listen to God's story. In the application part, I want to touch about light cannot be hidden. Matthew chapter 5, 14. We are called to be light of the world. Our light can get dim if we don't have the input of the word of God. But our light can be hidden. In Matthew chapter 5, we say, light must put on the light stand so that the light can shine. But unfortunately, the light is with us. It's not shining. Not, people can, not many people can see the light. Maybe we must reflect back. We want to be a light of the world. Is our light shining bright? Is our light being hidden? If our light gets dim, then we need to do something about it. We must come back to the Word of God and let the Word of God refresh us so that our light be, will be brightened again. Same thing, we are salt of the earth. In Luke chapter 14, 34 say, If the salt lost its saltiness, it becomes useless. It will be thrown out and build will stand on it. Dear brother and sister, we cannot lose the saltiness in us. If we lose our saltiness in us, the Lord will just throw us out. Therefore, 
a light cannot be hidden. Uh, and we cannot lose our sockiness. Wish me. This, go back to the first slide, the training is an intentional effort. You want your light to shine, you want to have your saltiness, then you must intentionally be trained in this area. It doesn't fall from the sky. We have to do it. And one of the ways we can do it is put our priority right. What do I mean by put my priority right? If I desire to want to, to be trained, say for example, in, in prayer, I have to begin by going to silent retreat. Of course, now I'm the NCO, you cannot do anything. For some of us who have not been there, you have lost your previous opportunity. You have to wait for maybe a year or two before they resume again. But this is where we, we in, in our timetable, we put it inside. That is our priority. If it's available, I must go. Because that will identify the stronghold in, within me. The stronghold that's holding me back. That I cannot grow spiritually. And I may, my light may become dim. And I may lose some of the saltiness. I must get it back in the book of Revelation. Rekindle our first love for our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is an intentional effort, no? I, in the last couple of days, I was looking at uh, Dr. Ravi Chakaria last sermon. It's in, in the YouTube. You just log into Ravi Chakaria last sermon. We, that was actually when he was 73 years old. That was last year. We talk about Daniel in Babylon. The training that Daniel prepared for himself is totally different from the training he received from the Babylon Empire. He programmed himself, even though he's a young boy, for himself. And he trained in holiness and righteousness. Go to the YouTube, listen to it a couple of times, you, you'll find it's beneficial. But one thing I must emphasize today, when you talk about the training of turning knowledge into wisdom. I'm sure that uh, a lot of people who spend time reading the Bible will have more biblical knowledge than I am. I also hope they have more wisdom out of it. It is channel in the book, Daniel, Dr. Ravi Chakaraya is talk talking about how we change our biblical knowledge into wisdom of God. And one of it is, put your priority right. What is important to you? Put it right. Put your resources into it. Spend time into it. If you need that, you need to travel, or now today may be hard, but internet. What do we look at in the internet? There are evil, there are, there are juicy things in the internet. But you want to focus yourself on the spiritual thing. Look at Dr. Ravi Chakaria last sermon, last preaching. Listen a couple of times. I put the link into my desktop. I listened to it a couple of times in the last few days. And Dr. Ravi Chakaria said, But if your eyes are back, your whole body will full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? If our eyes are bad, our whole body will be full of darkness. This is what I look at in, in ending our body. And if we look at the, our body not right, we look at the wrong thing, our body will be full of darkness. And this darkness will try to consume the light of Jesus within us. If we keep more room to this darkness, there will be less light within us. And that's why in Matthew chapter 6, if then the light within you have deemed already is darkness, how great or terrible is that darkness? My dear brother and sister in the Lord, MCO is not a time for us to relax, 
makan dido, makan dido saja. It's a time where we look into our spiritual welfare, put our party right, and do something about it. So that at the end of MCO, then when we see you again, we see the light of Jesus shining inside you. It's my prayer that more of us will have that light in us. Father, I give thanks to you for this book of Isaiah. Let us pray. Truly, our Lord Jesus said, "Is our eye are bad, our whole body full of darkness. If then the light within us is darkness, how terrible is that darkness?" And Father, I want to give our priority attention to this area. Oh, Father, be merciful to us. Cast out the darkness that inside us. Make your light shine into us, O God. Father, we ask that even we read the book of Isaiah, the darkness will be cast out by the light of Jesus in us. Father, I give thanks to you. Give thanks to you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. He make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn His face towards you and keep you peace. Amen.